Hey Bowtie Nation, Joseph Hogue here following up on a video we did a few weeks ago on the most popular dividend stocks. Ironically, one of the most popular videos here on the channel. I got a lot of requests from you out there in the community for this video, highlighting the most popular stocks, period. Growth stocks, dividend stocks, value stocks, these are the stocks everyone is buying. And following the crowd into these stocks to buy might not be a bad idea. Analysis of momentum investing in the most popular stocks does find that buying the stocks that have gone up over the last 60 days do tend to outperform the market over the next month. In this video, I'll reveal the top 10 most popular stocks owned by regular investors as well as those big money institutional investors. I'll show you the valuations for each and then the analyst price targets for the next year. Stick around though and towards the end of the video, I'll also reveal the three stocks held by those big fund managers but not by retail investors, as well as the ones you might be holding that fund managers won't touch. We're getting started, but before we do, you know I've got to send that special shout out to all you out there in the nation. Thank you for spending a part of your day to be here. If you're not part of that community yet, just click that little red subscribe button. It's free and you'll never miss an episode. I used the same screener on Morningstar that we used in our prior video, finding the stocks with the most number of funds holding them. In fact, where the last video stopped at just 2,500 funds holding those dividend stocks, I had to go to at least 4,500 institutional funds holding these stocks to narrow it down to just 30 of the most popular. I then crossed that list with the most popular stocks on Robinhood held by regular investors to create our list of 10 best stocks to watch along with those differences between the fund holders and the retail investors. And let's get right into the list with Tesla Motors, ticker TSLA, which I'm surprised this wasn't higher on the list. Only 3,338 institutional investors own shares of Tesla, though it is much higher on that list of most popular stocks by regular investors. In fact, towards the end of the video, I'm gonna reveal the three stocks hugely popular with retail investors that fund managers won't touch. Of course, not Kathy Wood or her funds at ARK Invest, which has a $4,000 price target on Tesla through 2025, and even a worst case valuation of $1,500 a share which would be 50% higher from here. Now there are some odd assumptions within those price targets that I want you to understand though. In that bare case, they expect Tesla to be able to sell 5 million cars by 2025 at an average price of $45,000 each. So increasing their sales 10 times and being able to bring that price down. But that's nothing compared to the bull case. Increasing sales by 20 fold to 10 million cars sold and bringing the price down to an average $36,000 each. Understand also though, that about half that $4,000 price target depends on the revenue from self-driving rideshare business. Down here where you see this 327 billion in the sixth box down. So even the bear case scenario involves a pretty strong ramp up in those electric vehicle sales and the bull case would need a revolutionary shift in driving. But there is no denying that Tesla has changed the industry and could continue to do the same in other industries. Shares are still pretty expensive at 21 times on a price to sales basis and over 200 times on price to earnings, but, but both are down quite a bit from the last two years. If the growth is there, then the shares will continue to do well. But other analysts aren't quite as bullish with an average target price of just $1,000 a share, just below the current price, and JP Morgan analyst Ryan Brinkman with a sell rating and a $335 price target. Cisco Systems, ticker CSCO, is the ninth most popular stock on our list, though not nearly as popular as in its heyday. Cisco has worked hard to transition from its origins in networking hardware into that software and cloud services business, but just like so many of those other tech giants, it seems to be having trouble reinventing itself. Sales reached $49 billion in 2015 and have gone nowhere since, closing just under $50 billion last year. Still, more than 3,700 institutional funds own this stock, and it's a solid dividend payer with a 2.9% yield. Now, it's also got a fairly attractive valuation at just 4.3 times sales, which is right around that five-year average, though 20% lower from its peak last year. Analysts are more positive on the stock though, with an average target of $63 a share, about 21% upside from here, with a high target of $71 each. Now, we've still got eight more on our list of popular stocks, but I've gotta admit, and this surprised the hell out of me researching this list, but I've only got one of these stocks in my portfolio. I sold off another late last year, but two out of the 10 makes me kinda wonder how popular these stocks really are with, with you out in the community. So, click through the share button below and share this video on Facebook with how many of these you own and be sure to tag me in the post. A Pfizer, ticker PFE, has always been one of my favorite drug makers and I did own the shares up to last December. Now at that point, just under $60 a share, I was up 59% on the stock and it just seemed to be getting richly valued, around four and a half times sales. 
It's come down a little bit to 4.1 times, though Morningstar is showing 3.7 times here. Either way, it's below that five-year average again, and I would consider buying this stock again if it dropped maybe below $50 a share. More than 3,900 fund managers still own shares, and it's a solid long-term investment with a best-in-class drug pipeline that continuously discovers new treatments. Pfizer is selling its off-patent division to Upjohn to create a new company that should create a stronger focus for management. Of course, it's not gonna be anything like the $80 billion in sales it made last year, but this company is still producing it around 30 billion in free cash flow a year. So just a cash flow machine for that new drug discovery. Analysts see the stock getting back up to that $60 a share target over the next year with, with even the low target only 5% below the current price. Another one here on our list, hugely popular with retail investors, Nvidia Corporation, ticker NVDA, and nearly 4,000 fund managers holding shares of this stock for that exposure to the next generation in tech. Now, Nvidia has been a tough one for me. There is no doubt the company dominates the next three to five years in processors and probably beyond. In the most recent Investor Day presentation, management estimated the company's addressable market could reach over $1 trillion over the next decade across hardware, software, gaming, AI, automotive, and the metaverse. But for me, the stock has just always been too damn expensive. Shares have come down from trading around 30 times sales last year to about a third that, trading now at about 20 times on that price to sales basis, but, but that's still about 23% above the five year average and well above my limit of 10 times price to sales that, that I usually like paying even for a growth stock. Now, when I say that, understand folks, I'm a cheapskate to my bones, okay? Like I grew up so poor, I couldn't even afford to pay attention. So you ask me to pay a premium value for anything and I start breaking out in a rash. For those of you growth investors though, willing to pay a little more for growth, the Nvidia has come down significantly and analysts are unanimously bullish here. The average price target is for $341 a share, more than 50% higher from the current price. And even that low target represents a positive return. Now, besides only holding one of these stocks in my portfolio, what was really interesting about this list is that only four of these pay any dividend at all. And two of those are a yield of under 1%, so it doesn't really count as a dividend. Only Cisco and Pfizer pay any kind of a dividend yield, but investors still love this group. So which do you like best? I want to get your opinion on this. The prior video on popular dividend stocks or this one, the most popular stocks overall. Let me know in the comments below, which is more important to you, those dividend stocks or the stocks that might produce higher returns. Next on our list of most popular stocks to watch, the Walt Disney Company, ticker DIS, with more than 4,100 institutional owners, with 66% of the company held by these long-term investors. And you see some owners here that you don't see in some of these other stocks on the list, like State Farm Insurance Corporation actually owns a chunk of the shares valued at $5.3 billion. And Disney has grown into the undisputed leader in media and entertainment, reaching over 130 million subscribers on its streaming service three years ahead of schedule, and recently forecasting as many as 260 million subscribers by 2024. And now where I think Disney has the advantage over these other streaming providers, uh, even over Netflix, is in its studio business and other content. You see, one of the biggest worries I have about the streaming stocks is it is getting ridiculously expensive to produce all that content, all those shows. We're seeing it come through in lower profitability on Discovery, Paramount, even Netflix. But Disney, with its six studios, including Marvel, Pixar, Lucasfilms, 20th Century Fox, it's able to continuously pump out those new shows that people wanna see. Our revenue did take a hit during the pandemic, but is back up to $73 billion over the last 12 months, 5% higher than in 2019, and it still has those box office business and theme parks to fully reopen, which, which could drive those 2022 sales. And shares have come down 30% from the peak last year and are trading for about 3.3 times sales. Now that is down from the five year average, though I would like to see it around three times on that price to sales ratio before I really start buying. Analysts are extremely bullish though, and I do think you can start picking up shares at this point for that long-term position. The average target price is for $188 a share, more than 41% upside, even the low target is a 12% return on the stock. Shares of Google, ticker GOOG, have kept their value fairly well against these other tech stocks, only down 15% from the peak of last year. No doubt part of that is the support from these long-term investors in the 4,200 institutional owners and, and just the stability in cash flows for that $1.7 trillion company. Google announced it would acquire Mandiant Cybersecurity recently in a move to compete with Microsoft and Amazon in those cloud services segments. 
This is a huge growth market, and all three of these tech giants are positioning for a cut. Now, beyond that dominance in search and YouTube and the growth in cloud services, though, I really like Google here for its venture investments. And through Google Ventures, it has investments in life sciences, healthcare, AI, robotics, and self-driving, basically all the major trends of the future. So what I think you're getting here is the fair value stock on that valuation on just that core search, YouTube, and cloud revenues, but, but then kind of like a lottery ticket from these Google Venture investments for future growth. Now, as mentioned, shares haven't come down quite as much as other tech stocks, so it's still trading around 6.8 times on that price to sales basis, down a little bit from the eight times last year and right around that five-year average, but I do think this is a fairly val valued stock. Maybe we could see a low around $2,000 a share in a full-on market crash, but probably not much lower from here. And this is another stock with an extremely bullish analyst community. The average target, just under $3,500 a share, is 34% upside, and even that low price target is nearly 16% higher. And one of the hardest hit stocks on our list, shares of Facebook, ticker FB, are down 44% from its peak last year, though more than 4,400 institutional owners are still holding on for that rebound, making it the fourth most popular stock in the market. Now let's look at the bear case first here. Uh, it started with those privacy changes in the Apple app, making it harder for Facebook to use that kind of, that kind of tracking that it serves up as targeted ads to users. That's driven the cost of advertising on Facebook, and it really means a lot of those advertisers are looking for other sites like Snap and Google. Now you throw into this that increased scrutiny from regulators over Facebook's dominance in social media, its practices, and just the popularity of TikTok for the younger generation, and those shares have dropped off a cliff. But the other side of this is the site still brings in almost 3 billion monthly active users and books one of the highest average revenue per users in social media. It's got a platform system across Instagram, WhatsApp, Messenger, and that main platform you just don't see with these other social stocks and still generates $40 billion in free cash flow a year. Now, Facebook will adapt to these changes, and at this point, it's really about valuation. Shares trade for 5.2 times on that price to sales basis, almost half the valuation average over the last five years and the lowest in the last decade. Even if the shares only make it up to that 7.4 times on a price to sales basis, which, which would be the second lowest of the decade, that would still be a 42% upside from here. Analysts have an average target price of $322 a share over the next year, more than 50% higher, and the high target of $466 each would double your money. We'll get back to our list, but I also wanna personally invite you to get the weekly bow tie, our free weekly newsletter with all the stock market news, strategies, and trends you need to know. Each week before the market opens, I'll show you what I'm watching and the stocks that could highlight the week. It's all totally free, just something I like to do for you out there in the community. So look for that sign up link below. We're into the top three most popular stocks with Amazon.com, ticker AMZN, and I like this one for a lot of the same reasons as Google. Now for a share of Amazon, you're basically paying for the valuation on that core e-commerce platform and its Amazon cloud services business, but you're also getting all those Alexa venture investments in AI, voice, and other tech innovations. And there is evidence that that core valuation itself may be undervalued. Activist investor Dan Loeb made news February when he estimated a trillion dollars in hidden value for the shares if you just value the two segments separately in a split of the company. That would make this a two and a half trillion dollar company and a 60% upside from here. Now, Amazon has always been another one of these stocks that I had trouble recommending because of the expensive valuation, but it's now down to a place I've never seen it before, into that value stock territory. Shares trade for 3.4 times on a price to sales ratio and 48 times on a price to earnings. Now that PE ratio is less than half the five-year average and among the lowest in the stock's history. More than 5,300 institutions own these shares and nearly two-thirds of the shares outstanding in the hands of these long-term funds. And this is one stock in the list that I recently did start buying, just under $3,000 a share. Analysts have an average price target of $4,100 each or about 34% higher from here and a high target of $5,000 per share. I'll reveal those three popular stocks with fund managers, but not retail investors next. But the second most popular overall, Apple, ticker AAPL. More than 5,400 institutional investors own shares of Apple, only second to one other stock. Now, Apple's customer loyalty and the brand strength means it carries a premium valuation versus some of those other consumer electronic stocks. For example, shares of Samsung trade for just 1.6 times on a price to sales basis and LG just 0.23 times on price to sales. Compare that with the current 7.5 times price to sales ratio for Apple and the stock still looks a little pricey, even on that stronger brand strength. 
over the last five years, Apple has traded for an average of 5.2 times price to sales ratio. So, so even, on, even high compared to its historical valuation. It's just a little expensive here. And what you have to understand about Apple as an investor here is that it is very much a product cycle story. It's gonna refresh those products with some great new features one year, but then might have a hard time getting those same level of energy out of the next year's cycle. And sales of MacBooks have been through the roof over the last couple of years, but could slow down, and it's hard seeing much of a product refresh this year. Analysts are still cautiously optimistic though, with an average target of $193 a share, or almost 14% higher from here, though the low target would be down 5%. And the number one most popular stock, Microsoft Corporation, ticker MSFT, with more than 5,800 institutional owners and 72% of the stock held by those big money players. And now if I didn't like the valuation on Apple, I'm sure as hell not wild about the 11.8 times price to sales valuation on shares of Microsoft right now. That's 24% above its five year average. And even though it's below the valuation we saw these last couple of years, I wouldn't be buying the stock right now. Now, like Apple, Microsoft has benefited from strong PC sales over the last few years, but, but it's gonna face lower sales in this segment this year and next. And cloud services has been the real growth here, but could also see a slowdown if businesses pull back that spending ahead of a recession. Microsoft does have some good growth ahead, but nothing to justify more than a 10 times a price to sales basis. Analysts are more optimistic though, with an average target of $374 a share, or about 31% upside from here. Even the low target of $320 each is still 11% higher, but I think there just are a lot of better stocks on this list to be had than this one. Now the most surprising thing I learned researching for these most popular stocks is the differences I found between institutional and retail investors. For example, the big fund managers loved three stocks that were nowhere to be found in those regular investor portfolios. Shares of Johnson & Johnson, ticker J&J, JP Morgan, ticker JPM, both held by over 4,300 institutional funds, while even United Health Group, ticker UNH, is in with 3,600 funds. And I think what the difference is here is these aren't the kind of growth stocks that have been popular with regular investors over the last few years. All three of these are much more that value investing side of the market and produce solid dividends, but not so much for price returns. Fund managers like them for the stability and the low risk, but they just don't trip the trigger for most retail investors. Now, on the flip side of this, there were some stocks that the retail investors loved, some of the most popular stocks on Robinhood, but that institutional fund managers wouldn't touch. These included shares of NEO, ticker NIO, GameStop, ticker GME, and American Airlines Group, ticker AAL, all held by less than a thousand funds, and only 360 fund managers are brave enough to hold GameStop. I think the volatility in these was the, really the big factor. While they may produce outsized returns, most fund managers aren't gonna risk their job if, if things don't work out, so they don't typically invest in these riskiest stocks in the market. Don't forget to share how many of these you own and click on the video to the right to see my seven largest stock positions, seven stocks I've invested over $250,000 in my portfolio. Don't forget to join the Let's Talk Money community by tapping that subscribe button and clicking the bell notification.